can or bottle? Which one is the better container for your home brew? And which one should you be using? Well, hopefully we're gonna answer those questions for you in this video, just keep on watching. So if you've been around the homebrew world for a little while, you'll probably notice that the trends of craft beer and craft brewing kind of tends to appear in the homebrewing sector after a couple years. It always lags a little bit. I think one of the most interesting and divisive trends that has sort of started to come out more recently is canning homebrew. Canning is something that pro breweries have done for a long time and for good reason. Cans are substantially better for uh, distribution of beer in that they're much more durable than bottles and they cost less to ship around store and for that reason pro brewers use cans and in classic home brewers fashion everybody wants to copy what their favorite craft brewery is doing and so when cans started to become a thing home brewers instantly were like I want to put my beer in a can there's a lot to unpack pun intended with the uh, cans versus bottles debate but we're gonna do our best here in this video to give everybody at least more information on it and help them decide whether or not they should choose to can their homebrew or bottle their homebrew Long story short, there is no right answer in this debate. There's certain things that about canning that make it better than bottling, and there's certain things about bottling that make it better than canning. And depending on your specific needs, your budget, your equipment, your setup, it might make sense to do one or the other. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all up to you. In this video, I'm not really gonna try to sway you one way towards canning or bottling. All I'm gonna do is put up a comparison between the two. This is for your convenience and so you can make a proper decision as to whether or not you want to jump into canning or just stay with bottling. The first category is weight. Um, and this one, in my opinion, is a clear winner for cans. Cans are significantly lighter than bottles. A single 12 ounce aluminum can empty with the lid on it weighs about 13 grams, whereas an empty 12 ounce brown glass bottle weighs two 200 grams. It is a stark difference in weight and that's the reason why you can ship 500 cans at a time to you and carry it up the stairs with one arm uh, versus ordering 500 glass bottles it's probably going to show up on a pallet. The next category is space. While these two containers are the same volume, uh, they do take up relatively different amounts of space. They're not all that much different in diameter, but because of the way the bottle is shaped, um, it takes up a lot more space when you're having to package them. So 500 cans in a box looks like this. It actually doesn't take up all that much space. It actually is about the same amount of space as four or five uh, 24 packs of glass bottles. So right there you can see that you have significant space savings with cans. Add to that the ability to stack cans on top of each other uh, means that you can actually store a little bit more and use your space a little bit more efficiently. Next, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the cost of entry into canning your homebrew versus bottling your homebrew. Bottling wins 100% on this because the cheapest can seamer out there, which I recently just reviewed, is the October Design Benchmark Drill Powered Can Seamer. It comes in at $500. It doesn't really get cheaper than that. I'm hoping that eventually, as this kind of continues to become a thing in home brewing, that more and more companies will lower that price as, as much as possible. Um, but at the moment, it's still around $500, which is not a small amount of money for a piece of home brewing equipment. On the flip side, in order to bottle, all you need is your like $10 bottle capper that you got with your homebrew starter kit. Um, I've seen much more expensive capping uh, apparatuses, but uh, those really run no more than 40 or 50 bucks tops. It's a clear winner for bottles. If you're just trying to save some money up front, um, then there's no need to spend $500 on a can seamer. The next category is cost per unit. So how much does it cost for me to ship 500 cans to my door versus how much does it cost for me to ship 500 bottles to my door? So an example of ordering cans right now, I'm looking at a 240 pack of standard 12 ounce cans from October Design directly. With shipping that comes into about $116 which averages out to 48.3 cents per can. But now let's go ahead and do the same thing for 12 ounce brown bottles. So if I go over to Northern Brewer's website and order 240 glass bottles, that's 10 cases of 24 a piece, um, it comes out to a total of $219, uh, which 
averages out to about 91 cents per bottle. So bottles on their own are definitely more expensive per unit than cans. However, that doesn't factor in the reusability factor of bottles, which is where it starts to recoup some value. If you drink your own homebrew or you share it with people and collect the bottles back, you can reuse your 12 ounce glass bottles indefinitely. You cannot reuse cans. No matter how hard you try, it's just not going to work. Once that thing is seamed, it's not going to get unseamed. So while cans are significantly cheaper than bottles, bottles have a huge win here in that they can be reused over and over and over again. Something you hear proponents of canning say a lot is that canning is much more environmentally friendly than glass bottles are um, because they're so recyclable. And there's a statistic out there that a certain number of days after you recycle a can, it becomes a brand new can again. And there's maybe some truth to that, I'm not quite sure, but that's actually a little misleading. Cans and bottles really have about the same impact on the environment. They're both equally recyclable. Um, it's just a matter of is your glass bottle or your can ever going to make it into the recycle bin in the first place? So I'm going to call this one a tie. And as far as manufacturing goes, cans actually are a little bit more harmful in the environment to actually manufacture than glass bottles are. The next category is durability. This is a big win for cans, and this is actually something that is probably one of the primary drivers for people to get into canning in the first place. Because aluminum cans can take a decent amount of abuse. If you're shipping glass bottles across the country, let's pretend you're a beverage distributor since shipping homebrew is still technically not quite legal. If you're shipping glass bottles, there's a high likelihood that they're going to crack. Everyone has seen shipping companies throwing packages around, tossing them into the trucks, tossing them out of the trucks, tossing them around the warehouse like footballs. It just happens. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's marked as fragile or not, if your package will not be treated with care. So when shipping glass, typically people will bubble wrap the crap out of that thing um, and add as much extra shipping material and space inside the package to absorb impacts as possible. With cans, on the other hand, you can actually handle a decent amount of abuse. Unless you're hucking a can at a rock or something, at full speed it's really not going to to break if i drop the glass bottle from this height and it hit the ground right now it would break if i drop the can it would not break so because of that they're much more durable they're a lot easier to ship around and they're not going to uh, have catastrophic failures in the way that glass bottles would that brings me into the next category, safety. Usually when people start home brewing, they have at least one bottle bomb. This is when you over carbonate a beer and bottle condition it and the pressure builds up into the bottle to such a level that it explodes. And this, no exaggeration, will send glass shards everywhere and embed them in the walls, the ceiling, the floor. Just think about what would happen if you were holding that bottle in your hand and it detonated on you. It's not a good time. And also, on top of this, there is absolutely zero warning. Um, the bottle is not going to expand or swell in any way. It will just explode randomly. So side note, make sure you're very careful bottle conditioning your beer not to over carbonate it by adding too much priming sugar and then also be damn sure that your fermentation is finished when you're bottling your beer. Cans have some interesting features that prevent this from happening. First of all, a catastrophic failure of a can is just going to be a split down the side or a split at the seam. It's going to blow the seam off. You're still going to have a mess on your hands because beer will be everywhere, but you're not going to have glass shards in, you know, yourself. Uh, if a can is approaching failure, it's actually going to have a really interesting little bit of a warning mechanism. The top of the can and the bottom of the can, as you see, are a concave shape. But as the amount of pressure increases in the can, these will actually bow out as if this was like, it looks like it's about to explode basically when it has that extra pressure. This is actually a safety consideration too because it adds a little bit of extra volume in the can and allows for that pressure to possibly level out at a higher level that the can can still contain. The next one is labeling. Um, I think this is a fair tie across both of them. If you are labeling your own beer, it's really easy just to go to a shipping label website, download a template, go ahead and play around with your labels, and um, you know you have some adhesive peel-off labels you can stick on either cans or bottles. They both go the same way, although some companies have come out with can-specific labels that wrap all the way around, even for home brewers. So do check some of that stuff out if you're interested. The next one is 
Uh, bottle conditioning or can conditioning? Can you do the same thing you do in a bottle in a can? And the answer is yes. So if you want to can your homebrew, you don't necessarily need to have a kegging set up already and add already formerly carbonated beer into your can. If you have a can seamer, you can actually treat it just like a bottle. You can add some priming sugar in there and uh, transfer your beer from the fermenter into the can, seam that thing up and let it condition at room temperature for a couple weeks and you will have the same exact result as you would have with a bottle if you'd done the same thing. So yeah, tie in that category as well. The next category is oxygen resistance and cans are a clear winner in this one. When that can is seamed, there is no chance of anything from the outside getting in and not over time either. When that bottle is capped, there is a strong seam on that, but over time, oxygen does work its way through underneath the crown and into the bottle. This is a characteristic that you could find with aged beers sometimes, um, especially if they have in bottle condition. Cans do not let any oxygen through uh, because it is a metal on metal seam that has been folded over itself many times and rolled up into a very tight crimp um, it is completely oxygen proof this is one of the main reasons you're always seeing New England IPAs in cans is because they're so oxygen sensitive of a beer that it has to be served in a can they are not going to last very long if they're in the bottle next up is light protection. If you ever had a Heineken or a Corona outside and that clear glass bottle is just letting the sun rays go in and you taste the flavor change, that's what's going to happen when your beer gets light struck. We don't want that. Brown glass bottles do a pretty good job of keeping the UV rays out of your beer. This doesn't matter. If you get a good strong sunbeam going into your beer supply, you're going to probably have a couple of light struck bottles. Uh, with cans, you don't have that problem. They are 100% light proof. Um, and that reason is going to help your beer stay fresher longer as well. The next, uh, next category is long-term storage. Big win for bottles here. There's two situations in which you definitely do not want to can your beer. The first is if you have a highly acidic beer. So acid and metal don't mix very well. Uh, and beer, even though it's not really you know, harmfully acidic or corrosive, over time it will eat away at the metal in a can. And you can have a can failure because of that. With glass, you don't get that problem. But secondly, storing dark, strong beers um, is best done in a bottle instead of a can. And the reason for that is that very slow oxygen ingress that I talked about earlier. One of the reasons why strong beers condition so nicely and cellar so well is because there's a very slow amount, a gradual amount of oxygen that enters into that bottle, very, very small amount, that creates a nice, soft, mellow flavor um, that is not present in the young beer. That's one of the reasons also why barrel-aged beers have some of that smooth character. Uh, it's because of that slow oxygen ingress from the barrel as well. So nine times out of 10, if you've got something like a Russian Imperial Stout or a Belgian Quad or something like that, it's almost always a good idea to age that thing in a bottle instead of in a can. The last category here is availability. How easy is it to get cans? How easy is it to get bottles? Well, it could not be easier to get bottles because all you have to do is go down to the beer store, drink a bunch of beer, and then you have bottles. Cans, on the other hand, you do have to order those online. Um, for the most part, you're not gonna be able to just go down the street and pick up a huge crate of cans. So I think bottles definitely get the win in terms of ease of availability. Um, and also gotta keep in mind too that with all of the crazy supply shortages that have been happening over the last several years of random materials, um, there was a can shortage as well for a period of time and that's that's something that could potentially happen again But it could also happen with glass bottles You never know what's going to be the next item to be uh, out of stock But I think cans are a little bit more vulnerable to that since you can only find them online So I would look into each of these factors take them all into consideration and decide which ones make the most sense for you I personally decided to start canning my homebrew for these specific reasons. First of all, I like to share my homebrew quite a bit. Um, and oftentimes when I share it, people are always asking me if I want the bottles back or they're coming back to me, they're saving the bottles and they're bringing them back to me, which is awesome. It's really nice of them, but it makes me feel kind of weird. Um, and I'd honestly rather just not put that pressure on people. So when you give them a can, it automatically doesn't give them the pressure to return your bottles to you. So uh, that kind of makes it a little bit easier because then more people are actually gonna be willing to take it with them uh, after a party or whatever. Secondly, space in my fridge is kind of at a premium. So uh, I need to make sure that I have a little bit more efficient of a storage system. Stacking my cans in there um, is definitely a better way of doing it. 
As you can see also, I'm taking advantage of the space savings with the empty cans as well. They don't take up as much space as I thought they would, which is really nice. I'm also taking advantage of the lack of oxygen permeability and the lack of light permeability. Um, that's always just a good thing to have. And I like to go outside a lot and bring homebrew with me. Now I'm telling you, if you bring a six pack of bottles with you while hiking versus bringing a six pack of cans with you hiking, there's a big difference that you feel. And it's just nice to be able to take them with you. You could cool them down in a stream or whatever. And um, it's just a lot of fun. It also means you don't need to bring a bottle opener with you into the woods either. But I also want to take advantage of the strength and durability of the can so that I can send it across the country if needed. I hope this video helped you make a decision as to whether to keep bottling or start canning. Um, either way, let me know what your favorite way of doing things is and uh, if you're canning, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Would you go back? And uh, let's just see what everyone has to say. Anyway, everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well so you get to see more content like this. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a t-shirt like this one, which is available down below the description box in my Teespring store, along with many others. I also have a Patreon, which is linked down in the description box, uh, where you can support the channel on a more personal basis and get access to some additional content if you're interested in that sort of thing. Big thank you to my current Patreon supporters. You guys rock. You are driving the production behind this channel, and um, it really does make a huge difference for me. I also have an Amazon store, which is linked in the description box, where you can see some uh, homebrewing equipment available on Amazon that I personally recommend. So if it's on that store, it has my personal endorsement and I've used it before. So check that out if you're in the market for some equipment. If you're interested in following me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer, where you can see slightly more frequent content updates and get an idea of what's going to come to the YouTube channel in the future. And last but certainly not least, if you are still here, thank you very much for watching to the end. It does mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And so until the next one, cheers.